Hello. Welcome back to Instagram Live, to Aloha at Home. Thank you for being here once again. My name is Jamie Tworkowski. I am the founder of To Write Love on Her Arms, and I get to be here. First off, I'm at home in East Nashville, Tennessee, and I am here on behalf of our team, based in Florida, but spread out all over at the moment, working from home. It's been a privilege to get to do these Instagram Lives, to get to host these conversations, and more than anything, our goal is to create a time and a space that can be encouraging, that can remind you that you're not alone, that other people are navigating this strange, hard season as well. Uh, get to have two conversations with friends of mine, friends of the organization today. Up first will be Lorenza Izzo, who is a Chilean actress who now lives in Los Angeles. You may know her from Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. She's also one of the stars of the up and coming Penny Dreadful City of Angels, which comes out very soon. And then we will talk to a longtime friend of mine, a longtime friend of the organization, licensed mental health counselor, Aaron Moore. Aaron and his wife, Michelle, we've known them pretty much since the beginning of To Write Love, so 14 years basically. And they work with Solace Counseling in Orlando, Florida. So really excited about today. Before we get to Lorenza, just want to share a couple announcements. Uh, first off, we continue to update our Fear Won't Win landing page. If you come to the website, twaloha.com, T-W-L-O-H-A.com, you will see our Fear Won't Win page. And we recently have added a playlist. We've updated the videos, the podcast episodes. There are downloads. I've seen people taking advantage of the coloring pages and people have been posting uh, their awesome creations. We've also added Zoom backgrounds. So it's been really neat to see our team get creative in updating that. And again, it's trying to give you resources and tools to navigate this time. We always want to talk about uh, our Find Help tool, which allows people to connect with mental health resources no matter where they live within the U.S. You can come and enter your zip code, connect with local mental health resources, including free and reduced rate services. Uh, we also offer some international resources and there's a self-care button now. So when you click there, you can also find ideas and tools related to self-care. We know that's so important in this season. We believe that hope will not be canceled. You may have seen that on a tweet or a post or a t-shirt. And uh, we know that so many things have been canceled in this moment. So many things are on hold, uh, so many things feel limited, but we want to remind you, you can still reach out for relationships, for friendship, for conversation, and you can still reach out for professional help as well. I'm excited to talk to Aaron Moore, our second guest today, to talk more about that. Uh, we continue to look forward to Saturday, May 16th, which is our Run For It 5K, the eighth annual Run For It 5K. We won't have a physical run where we get to all be together. Typically that's happened in Central Florida, but we are still having a virtual run, which simply means you can participate wherever you are, anywhere in the US, anywhere in the world. And uh, we're excited about that. Uh, Lindsay from our team mentioned that Aaron's podcast, I believe came out today and Aaron and I will touch on that as well. We have a fundraising goal of raising $85,000 for the Run For It 5K. It's one of our biggest fundraisers throughout the year. We're about halfway to that goal. Right now we have a matching grant worth $10,000 from our friends at Healthline, which simply means if you give $10 today, it turns into 20. So it's a great time to get involved. We love seeing people get creative with their campaigns to raise money. And beyond the finances, we just we love seeing the stories and the reasons that people participate, whether it's running, walking, pushing a stroller, pushing a wheelchair. We invite people to move for something that matters, whether that's your own recovery, whether it's in honor of someone that you've lost. Maybe it's someone who's struggling right now. This is a chance to physically move 
in honor of things that matter to you and to your story and to your life. Uh, let's see, what else? 320 Fest is coming up May 8th through the 10th. Originally, that was going to happen in Los Angeles. And that is an exciting festival that we were looking forward to being a part of. And now it's still going to happen. It's just going to happen online. I will actually be speaking on one of those panels. And this is the brainchild of Kevin Lyman from Warp Tour and Talinda Bennington. Um, Talinda lost her husband, Chester Bennington, from Lincoln Park and has become an amazing mental health advocate ever since. And so we are excited to partner with them, work with them. It's an amazing lineup of folks from the mental health world, folks from the music world, and I'm, I'm honored and looking forward to being a part of it. We'll keep you posted on the details. And I think that's it for now. We're gonna bring on my friend, Lorenza. Okay. We are adding her right now. Thank you for being here. Hi. Hi. <laughs> you got your new shirt on. I got my new shirt on. Hey. Check it out. Yes. I love it. It's so cute. I'm so glad. Thank you for being here. Of course. Thank you for having me. I, I was like, I'm kind of scared of technology and I finally got to understand how to get my AirPods connected to you so I could talk. <laughs> No, no, no. You're you're okay. It's a little fuzzy, but hopefully it'll it'll work itself out. I don't. Think I they... hope so. I mean, I can see you fine. The Wi-Fi and the connection here is just like really bad. Oh, I'll bring my puppy in at some point. Um, <laughs> the connection where I live is just not the best. Yeah. Um, and you are in Los Angeles right now, right? I am currently in Los Angeles, where I live and has been my home for. Seven years now. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wait, and was it all, was it Chile before that? Yes. I was born in Santiago de Chile, born and raised. I did live in Atlanta, Georgia from 12 to 16 years old, which is where I learned how to speak English this way, I guess. And then I went back to Chile, lived in New York when I was um, 18, back to uh, Chile and then eventually moved to LA seven years ago. So I've had my American experiences. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, so I don't know if you want to, we've had some people jump off of Wi-Fi and, okay. and it sometimes clears up the signal. I don't know if you want to try that. That might be worse. Okay. It's, well, it's up to you. I'm, I'm happy. I can see you. I can see you. So, I feel great. I, can you see? Okay. Can people see us? You're just a little fuzzy, but, but we're, we're making it work. I always Let's... remind people that Miley Cyrus was, has been doing this five days a week and she's having Wi-Fi trouble. Okay, thank God. So, if Miley Cyrus so, is having Wi-Fi trouble, maybe we yeah. can we so can manage it. can it. happen to anyone. I'm sorry. Um, no, no. How how is your family doing back in Chile? They're good. Um, my country had a pretty serious lockdown. It is a, a government ordained situation where it's the law essentially and they have a curfew. So after a certain hour you can't leave your house. And when you do leave your house, you need a special permit issued by the government. You can only leave your house once a day for 20 minutes or so around the block. And then essential uh, buying such as groceries and uh, pharmacies are open, of course. And now they do that. They did that for two weeks straight in certain neighborhoods. And so they're lifting it as they go, depending on the neighborhood. And when they lift it, you're allowed to walk freely, but you still um, have to att attach, of course, to the rules of um, social distancing and, and yeah. such. So it's pretty strict down there, um, but they're doing great. I'm, I'm really lucky that my grandmother was able to isolate really far away. My other grandmother also really far away and my sister and my mom are together and my other family, like I have a lot of extended family, so, but they're all uh, thankfully safe and healthy. And yeah. Off. Um, no, that is one of my memories from the morning we met, which we can talk about, but it was you, I believe, on WhatsApp talking to so many family members <laughs> while we were yes. on the bus to Tijuana. Yeah, that was a great, I mean, it's, it's, you're my first friend, like you said, that I've made at 6 a.m. in the morning, adult friend that I've made at 6 a.m. in the morning. Totally. No, so um, for those of you who don't know, we met on a, a trip with This Is About Humanity to I learn more about what was happening at the US-Mexico border. And yeah, we met at our friend Elsa's house at 
six o'clock in the morning in LA and and we we just met and then hung out all day and we just called each other buddy and sat together yes. and went went through customs together and ate lunch together like just you were my day. buddy I felt like uh I felt very embarrassed. I don't know why I get. I got really shy because it was like it felt like the first day of school, right? There were so oh, many totally. people, and I didn't know anyone. And we sat together and we became friends. It was really cute. Well, they because I, I think that was a term was like your trip buddy, but we just ran with it and called each other buddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, wait. Now, now I am seeing myself fuzzy. Do you want me to try to go off Wi-Fi and see if it works? And if not, I, I think go back we had in? someone do that the other day, and it worked well. We're doing our best here, people. Thank you for, for being patient. Let's see. We'll give this a, a second. Oh, here, let me. All right, we're doing our best. I'm gonna try to get her back on. This stuff just happens. We're all at home. We're all doing our best with what we have. So let's see if, Lorenza, if you want to send another request. Let's see. I will just wait for that. I'm going to try to add her again. Let's see. This is, this is the tricky part. Hmm. Lorenza, are you out there? If you can request again. Oh, thank you guys for being patient. This is the hard part. So let's see. Uh, oh, I will say this while we give her a moment. Uh, if you have questions for her, for me, later for Aaron Moore, you can submit questions. There's a little question mark box at the bottom of your screen next to the comment box. Uh, so we've been trying to get to at least a couple questions every time we do this. Hopefully we will hear from her again. Let's see. Shoot. I'm going to try. Lorenza, are you out there? Okay. You guys, I'm going to start this over. I'm going to try I'm going to jump off and come right back on and hopefully we'll have better luck. All right. We're trying again. Hello again. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for coming back. Once again, I am Jamie Torkowski. I am the founder of To Write Love on Our Arms here on behalf of our team. And hopefully we were just getting started with Lorenza Izzo and hopefully we can get her back on. Okay, we got it. Okay, we're getting her back. Thanks for your patience. Hi. Hi. Oh my God, I am so sorry. That was, that, no. that took us down. <laughs> no, no, no. We're, everyone's doing their best. Gracie's doing her best. No. Us I safe. get so frustrated with technology. I'm just gonna stay like this. This is what we can do no, right okay. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're doing, it's all right. Um, <laughs> I do, I said this in one of the earlier ones, but uh, in a way it's fitting because it's a challenging time. We're limited, yep. we're doing our yep. best and- yep. This is what happens. What were we? Oh, we were talking about our trip to Tijuana. Yes. And how we became fast friends. I yes. wanted to ask, I don't know a lot about Chilean culture. And I wonder, mm -hmm. I wonder about mental health in the context of where you grew up. Was that something that was talked about? Is that when did that sort of show up on your radar? I mean, I'm 30 years old now, and I grew up in a society or in a in a micro culture micro organism because I, I did grow up um privileged in in some sort of way i had a I had access to a really good education i had a i had a, a family i had a house i had a home i had you know i had really 
at a nice upbringing, so to speak. And in, in that country, in that culture, I think in any uh, uh, part of it, it it's very um, Catholic um, influenced. It, it's, a, it's a much more conservative world and the ergo mental health is not really something I grew up think, uh, thinking it was okay to speak about even. You know, I, I think there was, there's a lot of still even stigma with um, getting treatment, for example, or, or even having a mental yeah. condition or, 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 or a mental disease, so to speak. Even, even those words were kind I remember growing up, like, it was common for people to make jokes like, ha, I'm going to send you to a loquero. And a loquero is like the crazy, the, the person that deals with the crazy people. Um, mm. Which was interesting because uh, growing up, I actually ended up, I struggled a lot with, with different issues. And, and my mom at some point did send me to therapy. I started going to therapy at a very young age. I mean, not very young, but I remember, I think 16, going to my first therapist. And I was really embarrassed. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't tell anybody that I was doing it. I, I, it was, there was a lot of, of stigma. I, and I've seen the change. I think today my country has definitely evolved. However, there's a significant older generation that's very much driven the, the the mentality of 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 that country not our younger generations absolutely that's it's definitely changed and opened up but there was growing up there was a lot of stigma with you know uh being queer for example or or being from a yeah. different country or a certain religion or a certain color of your skin it, it's it's definitely a more old school situation the way I, I i grew up did you have a good counseling experience Kind of in not those at the, years? Not at the beginning. I have to say I, I wasn't that lucky in that sense. That my, I don't think it was the right fit for me. I don't think yeah. it was the right counseling. A lot of the times, you know, I, I, I went for what we thought was an eating disorder, but it was never really treated as, as something that was deeper. It was just, let's treat the eating disorder and give her some pills. So I was always going to, I got relayed to a psychiatrist who just gave me pills rather than um talking about maybe what was underneath or why or what that was an example of and later in my years like today I look back and I'm like oh my god I probably actually didn't even need to do a lot of the treatments that they guided me in that were actually way more detrimental to my health and I had to work double <laughs> to come yeah. kind of come back from it <laughs> I, I mean I I do think mental health is an ongoing process and it never ends you're always working on on yourself and sure. I think in, in your inner growth and that I, I learned later on with the years. Today I have, I'm really happy in, in that sense. I have a really yeah. good have situation. You, <laughs> have you circled back to therapy? I have to I, grab this little Gracie, stick that she's clawing grab. at. Well, it'll take one <laughs> second. Go, go, go. Let's grab our therapy dog. I'm, I'm a big fan of my therapy dog. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> go for it. Come here. Okay. Um, have you circled back to therapy as an adult? Yes, absolutely. I... I went back and forth when I stopped going to therapy when I was 19 and I kind of got into this world of, I don't need it. I'm okay. They, and also I felt so screwed over in a sense by my therapy experience that I was like, Oh, if this is what therapy is, then, you know, screw it. I'm not going to do that. And when I moved to Los Angeles, I started, I felt a lot of things, um, you know, I think as you get older also, you're just much more self-aware of things that pop up inside you that you kind of are no, you're more able to notice, at least in my experience. And that's when I kind of seeked help. And, and I, I tried um, a couple of therapists and today I'm actually with my favorite person in the world. Like, I don't know what I would do without her. <laughs> yeah. Wait, your therapist, you mean? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the Does other one even more. <laughs> your girlfriend is like your second favorite person. <laughs> No, no, no. I think it's different categories. My girlfriend okay. is my absolute person, favorite person in the world. Yeah. My therapist is more of a necessity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a, 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 a weekly or bi-weekly or even monthly reminder of, of, of checking in, as I call it. Yeah, no, that's so good. Well, I've been trying to ask everyone what in this, in this season of social or physical distancing, quarantine, isolation, what what has self-care looked like? Maybe what has prioritizing mental health looked like? I wonder what's been hard and what have you found that's been helpful in this time? Um, it's interesting. I tend to be a person that goes really fast. Like I love the chaos of going fast even. Like when I'm busy and I go one appointment after another, like I love that. And I think one of my biggest things was the first two weeks, there was like nothing. And there was like this just like you know 
uh, everyone was in the same boat of like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, what is yeah. happening? And I, I'm a Virgo and I love to clean. And I went straight into like cleaning every corner and being really busy cleaning and doing laundry and like just like every single corner with a freaking toothbrush, like that level. And, you know, at some point that runs out, you know, you organize your closet, you're like, you're trying to do all these things. And I was, I realized I was just, just running away from the feelings that I was having. And it kind of was a really interesting curve of like, putting it aside, like, I'm not scared of this. I'm not scared. Of this. I'm going to be really busy and clean and not feel everything that's going on inside. And I think yeah. the biggest thing I learned was I kind of just had to come down. And I had a night where I was like, my girlfriend and I were watching something and then we like started cuddling and I just started pouring crying, just like pouring crying. And I didn't understand even why I was crying because I was beating myself up about the fact, hey, you're lucky. You get to be at home. You have a house that you're in. You have a, you get to be at home with a person that you love. You're safe. You're financially stable for a little bit at least, you know? Yeah. So I wasn't even allowing myself to feel those things. And I mm. think now it's week, I don't know, seven. I, I yeah, can't something like that. <laughs> For me, it's been really helpful to as much as I can, because I think we're all trying our best and we can, you know, make schedules and try to live a normal life. It's to be OK with the fact that there is no normal. It's just what it is right now and not yeah. try to figure out what's going to happen as much as I can and give myself try to give myself those spaces. Like even now I'm doing it, just breathe a little bit so that I can feel what I'm feeling. Maybe yeah. have a little cry or maybe have a little scream or have a little walk, or, you know, whatever that is to bring myself back to me is very helpful. And it's something I don't really practice that much in yeah. normal life without Corona times. So it's interesting that in these times, it's kind of forcing me in a way to, to do that. That is something that really scares me personally. Yeah. Are there are there certain things you're trying to do each day? Like I'm going to take a walk or exercise or other well, little so here's rhythms the, you've found? I'm trying to, for me, I put so many goals always that I'm trying to do the opposite. I'm trying to have a, a routine. And, and so like, okay, today I'm going to wash the dishes and clean this. And then I'm going to call my mom and then I'm, because I need a routine, so to speak. But I'm not doing these crazy goals of like, I need to clean the closet and sort through this and write a master script, like whatever, like I need to come out of this quarantine with this masterful mastermind script or whatever. And now I'm like, okay, let's just calm yourself. Just one little thing yeah. a day. And I think that's been the biggest thing. For me personally, it's going on a walk. I live in Beachwood in Los Angeles and we're lucky enough that we have all these like hills and stuff. So every day, no matter what, my girlfriend and I will go on a really long walk, like an hour long walk with our face coverings, our little dog. And I think that's been really helpful to get you out live of the near house. the Hollywood sign, right? Is that what that means? I'm right underneath it every day. I go out and I see her and I'm like, okay. All right, <laughs> here uh, we go. I have like a little practice even when I, sometimes when I'm after a long day, I'll be driving back and I'll be feeling like you're exhausted or something and I'll see the Hollywood sign and it's just, wow, Lorenzo, remember. You remember that you were born in Chile, raised in Chile and this was like my wildest dreams and yeah. I'm here, so it's really cool. That's so rad. We have to say hi to Elsa Collins. She commented a couple yes, times. Yes, I just saw her. Hola, mi amor. I've been seeing a lot of my friends from Chile too. Yeah. That's really cool. <laughs> we, wouldn't, we wouldn't know each other without Elsa. We only, yeah, we know each other because of our dear Elsa. Yeah. I wanted to ask you, and obviously it'll, it will relate. You have the, your new show. When does it come out? In a couple of weeks, less? Yeah, speaking of Hollywood, so I had a really big Hollywood moment yesterday. Um, I went to, I found out there was a big billboard of me yeah. and it, it was so crazy. And I, I, went, I drove by yesterday to see it. I have this show called Penny Dreadful, um, City of Angels that comes out this Sunday on Showtime. And I mean, Penny Dreadful is a show that's had a lot of following because they did uh, three seasons um, before with Ava Green and Josh Hart. And it was apparently a really successful show. I only saw the first season, but apparently did really, really well. And um, the creator, John Logan, and Showtime were so excited to do a whole new, under the same umbrella, but a whole new different show, kind of what American Horror Story does, where now we go to Los Angeles 1930s time period. So it's cool because it touches on a lot of history of how this city was built. And I had yeah. no idea the deep rooted history of the city and how the building of the highways the Nazi movement that was beginning at that time, the the big community, Belvedere Heights community of Mexicans and Latinos that were pushed away to build these highways. We're going to be touching on so many issues in a fantastical, almost supernatural way that are going to, I hope, 
resonate a lot with what's happening today with our government and um, our, our current issues that are really dear and important to my heart. So I'm, I'm so excited. And I, I still can't believe my face is in a building yeah. in Hollywood. Like what is happening? No, I saw that photo. It's awesome. I feel like not, not everything, but you've been in some stuff that was heavy, that was dark. Yes. And as I've gotten to know you, you're so joyful and light. And I wonder what it's, <laughs> what it's I'm sure you get this a lot, but what it's like to work and, and to tell those stories. And if that's hard at times, or if you enjoy that. It's, it's interesting. Like, I mean, you're touching on a couple of things there. I think, you know, I, I, I I had the honor of having a conversation once with Samuel Jackson, with that actor. And, and I just was asking him about his career and he said something really interesting. He was like, I don't go to therapy. My therapy are my roles. And he, he said it kind of in a joking matter. I later found out that he actually does go to therapy. <laughs> but there, there is for sure an inner journey that you do when you get to create these, these characters, right? And there, there, there's a lot that goes on because, as, you know, each actor has their own journey and process and how to, get to where they're, you know, where, where they want to go with their character. And some of it you drag from personal experience, some of you don't. But regardless of what you're doing, you are putting your body through the physicalities of these emotions, whether it is the crying, whether it's the laughing, whether it's the anger, all of those things, you're actually feeling them. Your brain might know in the back of its mind that it's not real, but your body doesn't really know. You know, there's sure. a really interesting uh guy i mean incredible legend of acting and he was grotowski and they, they called the grotowski method and he talks about how physicality pre prevails comes before your emotions like how you can start shaking and then you'll end up crying and in all of this there is there's a big release that happens when i do a role there's something really cool i, I get very attached to it and i think it's for sure me i can't say like oh i created that role and that's a different person in fact sure. i have a hard time letting go but in a weird way, you have to be so constantly aware of your emotions and how you process them as a person and clock them so that when you are doing another character, you can reach into that, into that little incredibly cool machine that you have inside of you that is nothing like a machine, that is actually the most coolest magical tool you could ever have. And, and, and that's your heart. And that's your connection to your heart and to your soul. And that's really cool. I mean, I'm blabbering now, but all to round it up in, in a pretty bow to say, that absolutely, when I get to delve into these dark characters, there's a magical release for me. I definitely have fun. Like, you're right. I am this. This is me. <laughs> yeah. And there's for sure a thrill in getting to do these dark, complicated figures. And for me, I just find a lot of beauty in darkness. Darkness always comes usually to me from a painful part. And I'm very interested in finding that journey, finding that. And when, when, when did that happen for that person or that being that, yeah. I'm, that I'm doing, you know, and, and, and how to you know, fairly and, and, and do it just in, in how I portray that or how, or how I feel that. Yeah, I love that. Thank you for sharing that. Is it okay to take a couple questions from the people watching? Yes, of course. As long okay, as they're nice. Look. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I'll pick out nice ones. <laughs> uh, uh, um... I, I don't even know if I'm actually... Stop talking for God's sake. I'm no, sorry. No, you're I'm doing great. Do talk a lot. Okay. Here, no, no, you're, this, this is awesome. So this one's for you. How has mm -hmm. your body image impacted your mental health? Advice on improving that? I mean, hugely. I think it's, it's a hard question to answer in a short period of time. Because for me, it's been a very uh, long process of getting to a healthy point in terms of body image. I think uh, to answer that question directly, the healthier of a relationship I have with my self image, the not easier, but the more groundness I get with who I am as a person and not having to struggle. I think the, the repeated tape I've had my whole life of you're fat, you're ugly, you're fat, you're ugly, you're not enough is something that was definitely contained in my self image worth. Meaning that I always thought if I was a certain weight or a certain look or a certain body type, I would be successful. I, I definitely had all my self image uh, worth was being successful. You know, I had to be pretty, I wouldn't be successful. I had to be skinny, I wouldn't be successful. And it's been a process. It's an ongoing process. It's an everyday process of, of really um, being okay with who I am and, and, and having this body right now with everything, it's beautiful flaws and it's beautiful imperfections be enough. And I think that's been the biggest thing for me is that you are enough. And it, it sounds simple, but I think 
as a lot of people you will know, it's it's, it's not simple. <laughs> and yeah. it just takes a lot of effort of understanding that for me, at least my worth is not my physicality. My worth is so many more things. And I, I, that's for me what it's been. Yeah. So what was it like? I know you, you shot an Adidas campaign right after we met. Yeah. How does how does that fit in? Like, was that scary? Was that exciting? What, what was that? I like? think I got this, this particularly this year, actually turning 30. And this, this past year has, has been a, a, a really big one in terms of emotional growth or, or, or health growth in, in how I relate to my self image. I think I picked a career. Uh, I think unconsciously, unconsciously that I had to confront it daily because I do have a job where I'm going to be on screen and you're going to, I'm going to see myself and I, people are going to see me. I'm, I'm exposing myself. I'm, I'm, I'm putting that out there and, and image is something you can't uh, shy away from in that sense. So this year, particularly something clicked in me of letting go of all of these photographs that I had of what I needed to look like or what I needed to feel like. And in that letting go, which has been a process, I've kind of found a much healthier relationship to food and to myself. And the Adidas campaign in particular, and the other movie I did in particular, I made it a purpose to not focus on my size or on my weight. I threw out my scale a year ago. I just, I've been doing little things that are like, we're not doing that. We're just focusing mm -hmm. on being happy, whatever that may mean, because it's hard to just maintain happiness. It's also a very sure, tricky sure. situation. And, maybe, <laughs> and probably focusing on being healthy too, right? Exactly. Um, things that make me happy. I, I, I realize you, your body can tell you so much if you cut away all the noise. That's what I've been, my biggest thing has been my connection to my body, allowing my body to tell me when it's hungry, when it's not hungry, when it needs to work out, when it needs to stay in and watch a movie, when it needs to overeat. You know, there's, there's healthy mm. ways to cope with the anxieties of, of, of life. And I think I've just been trying as much as I can to let me tell me and nobody yeah. else tell me what I need to do. Basically, I'm the expert on me and, you know, allowing that to be a healthy relationship. Yeah. Um, I want to ask you about your relationship. Your girlfriend, Sophie, I saw a comment a moment ago. We hear, and, and, and obviously, I, I think a lot of us know that this relates to mental health in terms of how hard it is for so many people to come out. Can I come out? What response will I be met with? Or maybe they have taken that step and it didn't go well. It didn't feel right. And I wonder what you might be able to share just about what your experience, um, someone asked if this is your first queer relationship and just anything you'd be open to sharing about that. It is definitely my first queer relationship. <laughs> it is my happiest relationship. Um, yeah, it's it's tricky. I, it, I've been living in Los Angeles, as I said, for seven years and it's definitely shown me how much more open a community can be and and your your surroundings can be and I you know there's such there's such a thing to be said about your chosen family I have surrounded myself with people that certainly support me for me who regardless of who I'm with regardless how I wear my clothes regardless of what I do to my hair regardless what gender I identify or what I'm attracted to or what I identify as and that I think was very helpful in me feeling very open about my relationship with Sophie. I mean, I, I told my family right away, I, I really didn't feel in, inside of me anything that was like scary or tricky. It wasn't until later when I would tell people and I would get certain reactions. I was like, oh, wow. You know, I, I've had queer best friends and I've been surrounded by them my whole life. And I never really experienced what it was like to actually feel that pushback, feel something that to me makes such little sense. In my mind, it's like if I'm in love with someone and it feels so good, how can that be something bad? Like I, I couldn't compute it. And, you know, I, I did get a lot of pushback. I had a situation where Sophie and I were here in Los Angeles at Trader Joe's and we were buying, I don't know, lettuces. This was before Corona times. And we just shared a kiss and a lady screamed at us. I know that like she just screamed something really that I don't want to repeat because it's not worth it. And I was just so taken aback by it. And we had another girl walk by and just say like <laughs> something mean to her in our defense. Um, yeah. And I just, I, there, there was like a twofold process. Like at the beginning, I was just so shocked by it and kind of scared. And then it just kind of moved on and, and didn't feel it. And it wasn't until a week later, it kind of hit me. 
um, when I told my family it wasn't so easy with some members of it and of my family in Chile, but most of my friends were really cool with it. There is a certain aspect of health, of mental health that you really have to take in your own arm, in your own, uh, how do you say, it? your own, how do you say it when you take it in your own terms, in your own arms? In your own I hands? In your, yes, I had to like, I, I realized, oh, this is going to be a thing and I'm just going to have to protect myself and my partner from that because I'm not mm. going to have it. Yeah, that's so good. Thank you for sharing that. I of know course. I know it's a busy day for you. I know you're promoting your new show. So thank you for spending this time with us. And, thank you for uh, having I'm, me. I'm so sorry it's this blurry, by the way. I no, can tell no. everyone's saying it's blurry, but... It's okay. I'll... It's not your fault. Yeah, it's okay. Um, <laughs> I'm so glad that we are friends. I'm so proud to know you. So thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. I'm so proud. Thank you for doing what you're doing, babe. It's really so fucking inspiring. And I'm so happy we have you in this world to speak some real necessary things. Oh, thank you for that. Thanks for your support. Um, you have a great day. Stay safe and stay healthy. You too. Stay safe. I'm going to watch the next one. Okay, I'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye. Love, bye. Thank you. Bye. Dun, dun. All right, that was Lorenza Izzo. She is wonderful. Gracie, my dog is grumpy. Yeah, Lorenza is awesome. If you don't already, please follow her. And we are gonna bring on our next guest. Elsa, thank you for being here this whole time. Thank you for watching. Thank you for introducing Lorenza and I. Uh, again, Aaron Moore is our next guest. He is a licensed mental health counselor based in Orlando, Florida. We had his wife, Michelle, on a week ago. And so I'm excited to talk to Aaron. Let's see if we can find him. We got him. And drink some water. And once again, if you guys have questions, let me try to Oh, Aaron, it says unable to join. That's no good. Aaron, did you, is your account still private? I don't know if that could be it. All right, let me, I'm gonna close this one and jump right back on and see if we have better luck.